Hey guys, Max Selby Queen here, and welcome back to what I believe is going to be the final episode of our Nancy Drew Message in a Haunted Mansion walkthrough series. I'm really surprised at how sh short this game turned out to be because literally, we this is like my shortest series that I've ever done. And we just did Secrets Can Kill, and that was like, what, six episodes? And this one's only going to be, I believe, five. I think this is the fifth episode, so this was really short. I'm very surprised at how short this game turned out to be, but, you know, it was kind of simple. Do this, this, like a little task list of things to do, and once you do them, the game pretty much solves itself. So, last episode we left off. Uh, Rose told us everybody was going to be gone for the winter festival tonight, and we ended off with this little letter here. I kind of uh, swerved you guys and was like, you know what, we're not going to find out who wrote this letter until the next episode. So, let's go ahead, let's see who wrote the letter. Enough suspense. Emily Foxworth is the one who wrote the letter, and if you guys will remember, we talked to Emily, and she's the one who was supposed to be getting us the true meaning of gumbo foo, because I don't believe Lewis for a second. He's on my list of people that I am concerned about because he could be behind this, those accidents and stuff. Him and Abby, definitely the top two suspects. So let's see what Emily Foxworth found out. Nancy, I'm sorry I could not drop this off myself, but I am out the door for a month-long photo shoot in Mexico. I spoke with my friend about gumbo foo, and she told me that it means gold treasure mansion. She wrote the Chinese symbols below. Hasta luego, Emily. Okay, well, apparently gumbo foo does not mean what Lewis says it meant. So he was lying through his teeth. Obviously for a reason, because gold treasure mansion basically means there's got to be gold or treasure in this mansion, and he's probably looking for it, if I had to guess. Wow, okay, so that was very informative. Um, also, she told us that they took one of the... Um, posters or something like a, a one of the tapestries like the tapestry over here she took it down to get cleaned and I believe it was over here yeah so something to do with over here and oh oh you guys are gonna remember this remember we went to Abby's room and we had to look up those zodiac symbols or whatever they were called and I told you we'd have to remember them yeah Here's where they're going to come in handy, that you wrote them down in the correct order. Luckily for you, if you didn't, I'm here to put them in the correct order because I have it, of course, here right in front of me. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we put them in the right order um, and see if we can get some clues as to what's going on here. Um, because apparently you can push them in on the wall. And if you push them in the right order, they reveal a secret safe, which has some interesting symbols on them. Interesting indeed, if you guys will remember on the tapestry, it tells you which symbol goes first and when in what order, and we already know what each symbol means because we've seen them around the house. So let's put them in order like they appear on the tapestry, I believe. That's how you're supposed to do it. Child is the first one. Number two is going to be beginning, which is this one here. Number three was daughter, which would be this one here. Number four was just the number four, but it was the box with no border or something like that. Uh, number five would be the eye, which was this box here. That looks like a little ruler to me. Um, number six was fire. So there's fire. Number seven was moon, which was this one. Number eight would be mm, king. And I believe that one would be the three lines. Number nine is river, which would be the three lines with no line through them. Number 10 is gold, and there we go. I believe that's all of them. And, hello, we've opened the safe, all right. So I guess we should take a look at what's in the safe uh, first. Oh, 
joy we have those amazing amazing letters that are so hard for me to read <laughs> great um yes i can try to read them the best that i possibly can but you know i'm gonna obviously do uh, a terrible job like i usually do all right let's see here my dearest elizabeth i could never fool I can never fully. I can never really get used to. No, I have no idea what that. I can never sully that sweet name by calling you Lizzie. You shall evermore be Elizabeth, my Elizabeth, the sweet dear woman who has honored me with her enchanting presence and grace. Tonight, I ride on yet another perilous trip, but always to return to your beloved smile. Uh, until then, please accept this bouquet of gardenia, your favorite, El Diablo. Last will and testament here of Elizabeth Applegate Valdez, okay? I, Elizabeth Valdez, do hereby make this my last will and testament. To my dear friend Nelly, Nelly Beachman, Beecham, my black onyx necklace and earrings and the sum of $5,000. To my employee Wing Tang, the sum of $15,000. To my cherished secretary Mabel Craddy, the sum of $10,000. And to my beloved husband Diego Valdez, the entirety of my estate, my house, and its contents, with the exception of the be bequest above. In the event that my husband Diego Valdez is not located after a period of one year after my death, or is found to be deceased, the entirety of my es estate, with the exception of the bequest above, are to be liquidated and all proceeds of said transaction are to be provided to the Ladies' Protection and Relief Society. Witnessed this 8th day of April, 1902. Okay. And here is the wedding day, so this must be uh, the wedding certificate of her and Valdez. Uh, looks like her jewelry box here. And what the heck is this? Okay, my dearest Elizabeth, only one soul on this great earth knows the two secrets that circle my heart. My love for you and my secret... Secret... Identity? I think that's what it says. Know that my intentions are the purest in all aspects. I am a modest man and all of the wealth that I have acquired I by devious means are put to the put to the oh gosh that's a hard one for me to read all given to the poor misfortunate and the defenseless and so I am a poor, misfortunate, and defenseless man in the presence of your beauty. You have stolen my heart, dear Elizabeth, and all I, and all I ask is your hand in marriage to be mine forever, Diego. Okay, so this must have been a love letter that Diego sent to her. Um, and oh, well, look at this little symbol here. I believe that that goes right there and hello okay so we have a little moon and thingy mabob here ah yes of course we need to turn them all into suns and i believe this is the correct answer for the junior level that is sounds like a lot of money or something and oh great we have my arch nemesis the slider puzzle, who I don't enjoy at all. So I have the video here of the slider puzzle, the junior detective mode, but it is super, super, super fast. So I'm going to try to keep up with it. I have the actual written way to do it um, written down, but unfortunately I can't do that. Um, because it's annoying to read it 
Um, and I tried, actually. I've already tried once before. Um, and I failed miserably. So now I'm going to try once again to solve the puzzle by the video, but it's literally going to take me probably forever um, because there's a certain way that you have to do this where each puzzle piece will go in the right direction and the video is like seriously super fast because whoever done this slider puzzle was really good at it and I obviously am not. So I'm going to try to do it the best of my abilities um, while following the video itself uh, because the person doing it is the creator, I believe, of the Slider Puzzle game. One of the one of the people that works at her interactive who is solving it for me, and I appreciate that because I clearly have no idea how to do it myself. Um, but the video is helpful, it's just really fast, so I have to go like super slow for the video, but I also have to back it up a little bit so that I can tell which one to move next so that I can get this correct. Because if you don't do this the right way, it will not reset. So yeah, you have to do it the right way so that it will reset. And I'm hoping that I'm going to get it on the first try here. I mean, I'm following the video exactly. So it should be pretty easy. So let's move that down, that there, that there. And I believe we've almost got it. This here. Here. This here. And then we move these two here. The body goes in the middle, of course. The wing goes there. Oh no, the body goes at the bottom. And this goes down here, then this goes here. And there we go! We got it open! Thank goodness I finally got that open. Ugh, that just drove me crazy trying to figure out that video. And what the heck? I didn't even get to see what that what was in it. Did I take it? Okay, it was a red jewel that was inside of the box there. And you know what? That kind of looks pretty familiar to me. Um, that red box there. Or not the red box, <laughs> the red jewel. If I'm not mistaken, didn't we look at a... Okay, we already solved that. I don't know why that's there. Didn't we look at one of the staircases? And it just so happened to be like that? Yeah, I think we did. Let's go and check it out. It was missing an eye. And there's Abby again with her crazy psycho sound effects. She's so annoying with those side effects. Sound effects. And yeah, of course, it's missing an eye. So should we put this here? Oh, hello. We did put it there. And well, okay. That's definitely pointing to this area here, so let's see what we got. It's stuck, it's whatever stuck. it is. Oh, we have the crowbar. Duh. So let's see what's in here. Oh! Gold! And to think I was standing on That must be Diego's gold! Along. What? Oh, hello! <laughs> Too bad Who just hit me in the head? Uh, about it. I Lewis. knew it! I knew it! There must be over a million dollars in here! I've got to stop yeah, before it gets yeah. away. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. I know exactly what to do. Yeah, you guys remember that. You remember it. What pay? Goodbye, Lewis. Hey, hey. Oh, he didn't die. Get okay, me out so of here. Anyway. Dear Bess, I'm just about finished with my renovation work and counting out all of those gold coins. Lewis was behind I knew it. all of the accidents. Hoping to pressure Rose into selling the house so he could find the treasure himself. Although Rose and Abby may not have a legal right to the gold, 
The bank the coins were stolen from will still give them a reward for only a thousand dollars. The house also has gotten a lot of publicity with all of the news stories, and the place is booked solid for the first month of its opening. I guess a haunted bed and breakfast with hidden treasures is all the rage these days, even if there are no such things as ghosts. Uh, I think. See you soon. Oh my gosh, we did it! We did it! We finally figured out who was behind all that mysterious stuff that was going on. It wasn't Abby! It was Lewis! Lewis was the one that was trying to pressure Rose into selling the house so that he could steal all the gold and figure out where it was. But we figured out where it was before he did, of course. And we were able to stop him by throwing that chandelier down on his body. He deserved it, okay? You guys might not have seen it, but when I played through this game, I could never find Lewis. Knew he was up to something because he would never show up in his room for me. It so happens if you follow the walkthrough, then yeah, he's always going to be there. But I didn't know that at the time. I like to play the games for the first time by myself without using the walkthrough if I can help it. But most of the time, I end up having to use a walkthrough, unfortunately, to finish the games. So I'm hoping that once we play through some of the newer quote games like the we get to around 10 11 12 and so on that maybe there'll be a little bit more i don't know easier for me to solve and it's weird because we're playing junior level not senior and i'm still having difficulty following through but you know what doesn't matter we did it we got through with the game we managed to find out who the killer was or this, in this case, it wasn't a killer. He was just looking for gold. Um, and that's it. That is the shortest series that I've done. Five episodes, I believe it is. Wow. <laughs> this was a really short game. So, I'm very glad that we were able to do it. And of course, we'll be going on to the next one. Um, don't remember what it's called as of right now, but we're obviously going to be doing it a little bit later. And I am so happy that you guys were able to be here for the series. I really hope you enjoyed. And I mean, I couldn't say anything more other than I guess I will see you guys in the next series of Nancy Drew games um, when we play the next one, which would be number four, I believe, uh, because we couldn't play through number two, unfortunately. I guess I should go ahead and do this if you are still here and you do want to know. I kind of talked about it throughout the episodes, but I wasn't unfortunately able I wasn't able to play number two, which I was really looking forward to, but I did watch Stay Tuned for Danger online and I saw someone play through it and it was actually a pretty cool game, so I'm really upset I can't play it. Maybe one of these days I'll be able to go back and play it. Um, but for now, I had to go right on to number three, which was this one. And I can't say that it was not my favorite, unfortunately, so maybe the next one will be a little bit different for me and I'll enjoy it a little bit more than this one. This one wasn't wasn't really the best for me. And actually, I should probably let you guys know now, like if you're here and you still want to know, if you care, you guys know how I am. I love to tell you guys what goes on into making this stuff because, I mean, that's what I like. I like knowing what happens behind the scenes and things. and. This took me a whole lot to get to work, okay? It really, really did. Um, you obviously are seeing a layout for the series, and for the first game we didn't have a layout because it technically had one made already, but I had to make one for this series because this game was so hard for me to get to work. Um, I used a software called OBS Studio to record, and for some weird reason, this game would not be picked up by it. I could not get this game to record. So in order to do that, I had to literally put my desktop as, um, I had to put my desktop as what I was recording. So basically, it would pick up whatever was on my desktop. So when I full screened into the game, here it was. Turns out, it was actually really, really small. It was like one-fourth the size of the screen. So I had to expand it, expand it, expand it, and make it huge so that it would look somewhat decent. And I had to move it around and everything. Basically, 
it's it's not what it's supposed to be. You know what? I might could show you guys actually. Let me see here. You can see right there. You can see my background or whatever. All my stuff on my desktop. Yeah. That's what I had to go through. I had to I had I had to do that and I had to make it bigger so that you could see the screen. That's why the quality probably isn't the best. Um, but for now, all the work that went into it seems like it was pretty okay. I really enjoyed it and uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed the walkthrough. So I'm gonna stop j jabbering and hopefully end off the episode on a positive note. So Lani Minel Minella, who plays Nancy Drew, thanks for uh, thanks for the great voiceover work. Um, I'll see you, I guess, since you're probably going to be the same voiceover actress in the next Nancy Drew game. Uh, number four, I believe. So I will see you guys next time when we start something new, I guess. 